I have stayed at every single Disney World Resort hotel. It's taken me years, but now it's time I bring you the definitive ranking. With my experience staying at these hotels, the knowledge of my team, and reviews from people like you over on allears.net, I've come to the definitive ranking of the Disney World hotels. These rankings are based on the value for money, the rooms, the amenities, the dining, the location, transportation, and more. There are over 20 Disney World hotels, and that can be a lot to choose from. So I'm gonna help make that decision a little bit easier. Our first ranking tier is gonna be Disney World's Value Resort. This is the cheapest category, consists of five hotels. Each one is gonna be characterized by primarily external hallways, larger than life theming, and a family-friendly and large group-friendly vibe. As a note, if you're looking for true value, none of these value hotels will necessarily be the cheapest option. I would go off of Disney property. You are paying for a Disney premium when you book a value hotel. You might wanna check out some of the Disney Springs area hotels not owned by Disney. Many of them even have Disney perks as they are good neighbor hotels. So go ahead and check those out if that's what you're interested in, if you're looking to really save fall on a budget, you know. I've especially enjoyed stays at the B and at the Drury Inn. Uh, you can actually see my stay at the Drury Inn in a full review on the channel. And if you wanna learn more about any of the hotels you see today, you can check out my full resort tours on the channel. I've done one for every single Disney World hotel and more. Let's get into that ranking. In fifth place, we have All Star Sports. Now, this is one of the three All Star Resort hotels. There's sports, music, and movies and sports is gonna be the least popular of those three, landing at the very bottom of our value category. Now, all of the value resorts do have limited dining options. Um, all of them are limited to just one food court and usually pool bars. The all-stars in particular rank lowest due to their less popular theming, their reliance on the Disney bus system, and their tendency to host large school and sport groups, making for a crowded and often loud environment. They are the least expensive for a reason, um, but that's good, they're least expensive. So rooms at all three All-Stars do start at $128. Now the reason All-Star Sports ranks below All-Star Music and All-Star Movies is because it has a less popular theme. I guess there's just not as much overlap between Disney people and sports people. I am both, um, both a Disney person and an elite athlete, as I'm sure you all well know. For each of these hotels, we're gonna talk about if you should get booking or keep looking. So get ready, here's the segment. Get booking or keep looking. You should get booking at All Star Sports if you are balling on a budget. If you still want those Disney perks like early theme park entry, access to Disney World transportation, and as of January 9th, 2024, the return of the Disney dining plan, then you're gonna wanna stay on Disney property. These are the best hotels to do so while still saving money. Are there cheaper hotels? Yes. Uh, that's totally true. They're cheaper hotels that aren't owned by Disney, but these are the cheapest that are going to net you all of those Disney perks. You also might want to book if you're booking for a large group. This is a very popular hotel with large groups, and you might want to book this hotel if you are going to spend a lot of your time in the parks. If all you really need is a place to lay your head, then All Star Sports is going to give you that. Keep looking if you plan to spend some time at your hotel. All Star Sports has a fun theme. I like the sports fields, but it obviously isn't like a full resort vibe. You also might want to keep looking if you want a more upscale environment and if you're not interested in being limited to only bus transportation. In fourth place, we have All Star Music, and uh, this one's gonna be a little bit different than All Star Sports. So All Star Music is gonna be ranked a little bit higher, mostly because it has a slightly more popular theme with music than sports, and this hotel offers affordable family suites that sleep six people. These suites start at $323 per night, which is relatively cheap um, as like a six person room goes. Gives you the option to stay in one room instead of getting multiple conjoining hotel rooms, which could be more expensive. The All-Star Music Suites are some of my personal favorite rooms to book on property. I think that they are really nicely furnished and a good value for money, especially when you compare them to a lot of the other Disney hotels that are very expensive. Regular rooms at this hotel also start at $128. A reason you might book All-Star Music, especially over All-Star Sports, is if you've got a bigger party, you might wanna get booking. You also might wanna get booking if you don't wanna splurge on adjoining rooms and don't mind staying in one room with that larger party. So if you've got a six person family staying, then those family suites could be the reason that you get booking. You're gonna to wanna to keep looking if you don't want everyone to be in the same space. Though there are two separate rooms and two separate bathrooms, this is still a relatively tight space. So getting two adjoining hotel rooms might be a better option for you. It's worth comparing. 
You're also going to want to keep looking for any of the reasons that you might skip all-star sports or if one of the other all-star themes appeals to you more. In third place in the value category, top three, baby, we're already there. We've got all-star movies. So yes, this is the third and final of the three all-star resorts. And this one, though it does not have family suites like all-star music, does have the most popular theme and tends to be the most popular all-star because of that. The areas of this resort are themed around beloved Disney movies like Toy Story, Fantasia, 101 Dalmatians, Mighty Ducks, and Love Bug. Rooms start at $128, just like the other All-Stars. You might want to book this hotel if you or one of your kiddos happens to be a particular fan of one of the movie themes. That can make for a really magical vacation. And you should keep looking for the same reason as the other All-Stars. In second place, we have Disney's Pop Century Resort. This is a decades-themed hotel that has some vintage retro vibes of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Does it go to 90s? Confirmed, it goes to 90s. Uh, this hotel is also located on the Skyliner, so it has more than just bus transportation. You can take the Skyliner to Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and the other Skyliner hotels. We jump up a lot higher in the ranking with our top two value resorts because of that Skyliner. The Skyliner can get you to the parks. The Skyliner has stops at Epcot and Hollywood Studios, as well as Disney's Riviera Resort and Caribbean Beach. Plus, here at Disney's Pop Century Resort, you can walk right across to Disney's Art of Animation and see that resort as well. So. A lot more prime location and transportation here at our top two value hotel. On top of that, Pop Century does have a larger than life theme like the other value hotels, but this one has sort of a nostalgic retro vibe. You can see sort of symbols from the era like platform shoes and mood rings on the different buildings. Um, it's a fan favorite for many because of this fun theming. Here are a bit more expensive than an all-star resort, but we're still in that affordable area. They jump up to about 174 per night starting. Now I would get booking if you are wanting to spend a lot of time at Epcot and Hollywood Studios. That Skyliner is a major plus. You also might want to book here if you are nostalgic, if you like that theme a lot. And you might want to book here if access to the Skyliner, that easier transportation, makes that extra 40 to 50 bucks on the room worth it compared to an all-star. Transportation is a big deal. Keep looking if the Skyliner scares you. I know that for some folks with a fear of heights, the Skyliner can be a little intense and they do not always run buses to Epcot and Hollywood Studios from here. Also, if you're going to spend a lot of time at Magic Kingdom, it's a bit of a haul from here to Magic Kingdom, so you might want to keep looking in that case. And if you're looking to truly save, just like with the other value hotels, you may want to check out one of the Good Neighbor hotels instead of one of the official Disney World hotels. Made it to our winner of the value resorts category, this is Disney's Art of Animation Resort. A resort themed to beloved animated Disney movies like Finding Nemo, Cars, The Lion King, Little Mermaid. Uh, this hotel is primarily focused on family suites. It is the only value hotel that features indoor hallways, uh, except on the Little Mermaid rooms. Little Mermaid rooms are also the only standard hotel rooms. All of the other ones are family suites that do sleep six comfortably. Like Pop Century, this resort does offer easy access to the Skyliner. They actually share a station. Um, but on top of that, it also has theming that is much more geared towards the Disney lover. Uh, so if you are looking for a very Disney hotel, this is one of the most Disney hotels. Uh, it's even got a very, very popular pool, which is right here. It's a Finding Nemo themed pool, which I think is maybe the best theme for a pool of all time. The standard Little Mermaid rooms are the most expensive of the standard rooms in the value category, starting at $201 per night. Those family suites are going to be more expensive, but remember they sleep more people. So you're looking at $459 per night to start. Of course, those family suites over at All Star Music are cheaper, but they're not as heavily themed and exciting as the family suites are here. In general, this hotel is just a favorite for many, many families. I actually was riding the Skyliner over here with a number of people who were just coming over to explore the hotel and take some pictures and see the theming. If you've got a cars loving kiddo, imagine walking up and seeing all your favorite cars characters parked here in the cars section. Now, since the Disney theming is not as much my priority when I'm booking a hotel, Art of Animation is actually not one of my favorites. I think that the furniture in the room feels a little bit run down in many cases or I don't want to say cheap, but you know, the furniture's dinged up. It's really lightweight. Um, if I'm going to do a family suite, I actually prefer All Star Music. I think it's, it's great and it's a little cheaper. And if I'm going to do the Skyliner, I prefer Pop Century because the rooms are updated over there. Now that said, the Little Mermaid rooms are getting an update here. So those rooms are probably going to be a little nicer. So should you get booking or keep looking? Get booking if you've got a kiddo who loves one of the themes here. If you've got a Cars loving kid, Finding Nemo, Lion King, 
Little Mermaid, this hotel is gonna bring them magic like no other. You also might wanna get booking if you need one big hotel room for your family and don't wanna book two connected hotel rooms or if you want access to the Skyliner, this hotel is a great option for that. I would say keep looking if you don't need a family suite. Those Little Mermaid rooms are cool and getting an update. You can get cheaper for rooms that are pretty cool as well elsewhere. If you are a group of adults, I would maybe skip this hotel. It's definitely more kid geared. You can skip this hotel if you want a more recently updated room. And that is our value category. Our next section is gonna be the Disney World Moderate Hotels. This category has five hotels. They are going to be the middle in terms of cost, and each of them is gonna feature a variety of amenities, some pretty fun theming, and primarily bus transportation. Ranked lowest in this category is going to be Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, a hotel themed to the Caribbean with areas based on the different islands, as well as the main Skyliner hub for Walt Disney World. Now, even though it is in last place, this hotel is loved by many, so it might not be last place for you depending on what you like. In fact, I think this is one of the more beautiful hotels to walk around in Disney World. It is however ranked last due to the more outdated feel of some of the rooms, some of which are getting an update soon. Select rooms at Disney's Caribbean Beach are getting a refurbishment. Uh, also expect for those pirate rooms, which you might know of the themed pirate rooms, to disappear. This resort is also incredibly spread out, which can mean very long walks to the rooms, Skyliner Station, lobbies, and dining. But that said, it does have some pretty underrated dining in my opinion, including a very fun pool bar, Banana Cabana, and the delicious Sebastian's Bistro. This resort is certainly not unpopular. It's just not as well loved as the other moderates, which I understand. Um, it also has a particularly pesky and infamous internal bus loop, but that's more or less canceled out by the easy access to the Disney World Skyliner, which flies over the resort and has its main station here at Caribbean Beach. Rooms here start at $258 per night, and you might want to get booking if you're looking to have easy access to the Skyliner or plan to spend some time at the pools and Sebastian's Bistro. Another reason to get booking might be that you want access to the amenities at Riviera Resort without splurging for a room at Riviera. We'll talk a little bit more about that one in the deluxe category, but this is a very popular hotel for visiting. And as you can see, it's walking distance from the edge of Caribbean Beach. But you might want to keep looking if either you don't want a long walk or have mobility issues. Uh, you can request rooms that are closer to the lobby, but, but many of the buildings here at Caribbean Beach do not have elevators and the resort can be very spread out. So it's not the best for those with mobility issues, even when you consider that you can request uh, rooms that are more situated centrally. If you want for sure updated rooms, this one is also going to be one you might want to skip for now as the refurbishment will be in progress for a little while and all rooms might not re be refurbished. You can certainly request them, but that wouldn't be guaranteed. We have Port Orleans French Quarter. I know, this shocked me. So Port Orleans French Quarter is one of the two Port Orleans Resort. It is the smaller one and it has a New Orleans French Quarter Mardi Gras theme going on. I was shocked that this one was ranked second to last in the moderate category, especially because it is very popular with all ears viewers. You guys love French Quarter. I love French Quarter. They have big gays. I think that this is less a reflection of the resort being bad and more a representation of how quality the moderate resorts are. So they tend to have something for everyone in the moderate resort category and people tend to like the moderate resorts. As French Quarter goes, this one is loved for its dining, like those beignets, and its smaller size. But be warned, it's very low on dining options and amenities because it is so small and it often shares a bus with Port Orleans Riverside. So you might end up with an extra stop over at Port Orleans Riverside. If you really want to go have like a sit down dining option, you're gonna have to go over to Port Orleans Riverside or take the bus to Disney Springs. That lower rating comes from the fact that this hotel just doesn't have a lot going on on its own and it does rely on the amenities of its sister resort over at Riverside. Rooms at Port Orleans French Quarter do start at $278 per night. You might wanna get booking if you're looking for a smaller hotel with lower crowds or if you love the Mardi Gras vibe. Keep looking if you want more amenities at your hotel and don't wanna be limited to bus transportation. These resorts do have a Disney Springs boat, but to the parks, just buses. Speaking of Port Orleans Riverside, this is the other Port Orleans resort. This resort is much larger and has more of an old South theme to it. This for sure is an all ears audience favorite and that is what lands it in the top three in the moderate category. It is consistently one of the highest ranked resorts on our website um, and my stay there, I definitely saw why. 
This has a lot of the same pluses as French Quarter, minus beignets. If you want beignets, you'll have to walk over to French Quarter, but it has a lot more room. This is a much larger resort, so beware of that internal bus loop, but expect more recreation and amenities, as well as dining compared to French Quarter, and still expect that great sort of Louisiana-informed theme. In my opinion, the difference between these hotels is really a matter of preference because it is walkable between the two hotels. So if you want smaller, but a little more distance to amenities, French Quarter, if you want bigger, but closer to the amenities, Port Orleans Riverside. The other big bonus about Riverside is they do have princess themed rooms. These are heavily, heavily themed hotel rooms. They are so much fun. If you've got a princess loving kiddo in your party, that could be a big reason to book this hotel. Just like French Quarter, rooms start at $278 per night. You might wanna get booking if you want that down south vibe or if you're looking for one of those princess themed rooms. This is also a great one if you plan to spend some time at your hotel. You can fish, hang out at the lounge, see Yeehaw Bob, who's an amazing performer at the lounge here, uh, eat some jambalaya and gumbo, hang out at the pool. It's just a fun resort with a lot to do for that moderate price. Now you might wanna skip out on this one and look for something else if you don't wanna be limited to bus transportation or if the theme doesn't call to you. But this is a pretty popular hotel. Folks tend to like their stay here, so it might be worth looking at. So in second place, we have Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. Now this one's kind of complicated. It's different than the others because Fort Wilderness Campground is classified as a value, but that's not really a hotel, it's a campground. So we're judging this more on the Fort Wilderness cabins, which are classified as a moderate resort. This hotel is very cool. It's extremely spread out and there is a ton of unique recreation. You can do archery and horseback riding. You can actually see us experience a lot of the fun recreation at Fort Wilderness in our recent loser has to sleep outside challenge in Disney World. That's all about the Fort Wilderness recreation. This hotel is a little less likely to please everyone in your party because it is more of a unique sort of like camping vibe. It's for outdoorsy types. It has a lot of like really fun, like country or Southern like flair to it. I'm a big fan of it because it reminds me of the Appalachian mountains, which is where I went to school. It kind of feels like grown up summer camp to stay here or family summer camp since everybody's there with their kids. The cabins like some of those value family suites do sleep up to six people and serve as a much larger space than a typical hotel room for a fair price. It's a similar amount of space to the family suites, but it's a little more expensive, also a little more private. You're not sharing a wall with anyone because you have your own standalone cabin. The real reason this resort pulls ahead is for those amenities and recreation. The resort has enough to do even if you weren't to go to the parks, even free stuff. I particularly love the Chippendale Campfire Sing Along, which is a really fun evening activity on select nights where Chippendale actually come to the hotel and tell jokes and you guys sing along with a cowboy up on a stage and then everybody watches the movie Under the Stars. It's totally free. Shocking that it is totally free because that kind of thing just usually isn't offered at hotels. It's stuff like that that gives Fort Wilderness a few bonus points. On top of all of that, Fort Wilderness does have a boat directly to Magic Kingdom. The cabins do start at $448 per night. Campsites are a lot cheaper, starting at $96 per night, but they can vary and it's still pretty expensive for a campsite. You're gonna wanna get booked in if you want to have a unique resort experience and take advantage of some of the recreation like the archery and horseback riding, or if you're big into camping, that could be a good reason to book this resort as well. And finally, it is the cheapest resort that is close to Magic Kingdom. So if you're gonna spend a lot of time at Magic Kingdom, this resort might be a good option. You're going to wanna keep looking if you're not really the outdoorsy type. Take this one with a grain of salt. I'm not really the outdoorsy type, but I do love hiking and camping occasionally. So I was a big fan of this resort, even though I'm not fully outdoorsy, but if you really hate the outdoors, you're gonna hate this hotel. You also might wanna skip it if you want it to be easy to get around your resort. This is a huge hotel, so huge in fact, that it's part of the culture for people to rent golf carts. I had to rent a bike to bike around and do my hotel tour which you can watch on the channel right now, including me biking around like a dummy. This one also might be one to skip if you don't wanna spend a lot of time at your hotel. Because this resort is so all encompassing on your own, it really does make sense to spend a lot of time here. And if that's not something you're gonna be doing, then you might wanna just go for an all-star or something to save some money. And first place in the moderate category, Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. 
Now, this resort is really interesting because there are two sides to it, really. So there's the Casitas side and Gran Asino Tower. Casitas is a lot more like a typical moderate resort. It's a bunch of smaller buildings spread out around the hotel um, with external hallways that lead right to your room. Gran Asino Tower is a relatively new addition. It is right by the convention center and it is a multi-story tower that has amenities that you just don't find at the moderates. It is often said that Coronado Springs feels like a deluxe hotel at a moderate price. And even if you are staying in one of the casitas instead of the more deluxe feeling Grand Asino Tower, you have easy access to all of the amenities of Grand Asino Tower. Some of my favorite amenities here include dining. This resort has a lot of dining, more than most other hotels. I especially love the amazing Dahlia Lounge, which is a rooftop bar. It is so beautiful. You can see so many parks from up there. And I really love Barcelona Lounge as well, which is a coffee bar in the main lobby. On top of that, this moderate is the only one with a fitness center, which is pretty unique. Truly, Coronado Springs does feel like a deluxe option at a cheaper price. And it is one of my favorites out of any of the categories. In fact, having stayed at every Disney hotel, I think that if I were going to book a Disney hotel for my own vacation, I would choose a room in Grand Asino Tower hands down. Rooms start at just $250 per night. Now that's going to be mostly the casitas. It's a little more expensive to book in Grand Asino Tower, but not nearly as much as a deluxe hotel. You might want to get booking if you're looking for the best value for what you pay. Coronado Springs is one of the best values of any of the hotels. I don't mean that in the way that it's like the cheapest, because it's certainly not. I do mean it in that you get your money's worth in what you get at Coronado Springs. It also might be worth booking if you're a foodie. There's a lot of really great restaurants here, like Three Bridges out on the water. The Toledo Steakhouse on the roof actually has imported olive oils and a lot of really interesting Spanish cuisine. This is also a great one if you're a party of adults, whether you're there on business or at the convention or just hanging out, having a grown up trip to Disney World, as you are allowed to do. Nothing can stop you. This is not the most kiddo oriented hotel, which means it's a great one for adults who want a little peace and quiet, who want things to feel a little more luxury. Things get a little more kid oriented in the casitas outside of Grand Asino Tower, but Grand Asino Tower feels like a distinctly adult experience. That's not to say there won't be kids around, it's Disney World, but it's a lot less kid friendly than something like Art of Animation would be. Keep looking if you don't want to end up in convention crowds. This is one of the hotels that does have a convention center and it's a large convention center. So if a convention happens to be going on during your trip, you can end up with a lot of crowds at this hotel. It's also not a good one if you want to be close to the theme parks. Coronado Springs is all bus transportation and it is close to Animal Kingdom, which means that it's far from everything else. So this one has some of the longest transportation times of any of the hotels. It's also not the most Disney vibe. Even the casitas, it's kind of hard to find like that Disney vibe that you're looking for. So if you're looking to have like a very Disney, very character forward experience, Coronado Springs probably isn't gonna offer it up. But I will say there are some unique nods to Walt. Like up in Dahlia Lounge, there's a wall that's dedicated to Walt's relationship to Salvador Dali, which is actually part of the inspiration behind the architecture of the hotel as well. Finally, we find ourselves at our last category, the deluxe hotels. These are the most expensive hotels. There are 11 of them. And at each one, you'll find some of the most amazing theming, some wonderful amenities, and usually, pretty high prices to match. Now, as a note, we will be including Disney Vacation Club Deluxe Villas in this section. That's because Disney Vacation Club, which is Disney's timeshare program, does have some special offerings called villas. These villas are more expensive, uh, but are available to regular guests. They're a lot cheaper if you book with DVC points, but you can book them with cash, which is why we're including them here in this ranking. You don't have to be DVC to book them. They just tend to be priced a little better for DVC. Remember, if you ever are interested in a DVC room, you could consider doing point rentals with a service such as David's DVC rental. You can learn a whole lot more about that in our recent Beach Club one bedroom suite tour that's up on the channel now. Our lowest rated hotel hotel in the deluxe category is going to be one of those DVC deluxe villas. It is Disney's Old Key West Resort. Now this is an entirely DVC geared resort with primarily multi-bedroom suites. Uh, there are studio rooms here. I did stay in one for my resort tour of this hotel and uh, definitely the rooms that are more worth booking here are going to be those suites. This hotel is extremely popular with Disney Vacation Club folks. It's got reasonable point rental pricing, so it's actually something that's a little bit easier for people to book. It's quiet, uh, it's really spread out, but it does feel like having your own space or a home away from home. However, Old Key West is not as exciting to those of us not in the timeshare program. 
The rooms are large, but in many cases they are fairly outdated and the resort is sprawling, which makes it a little bit difficult to get around. While the theme is relaxing, it isn't the most thorough. Um, so you might like that old QS vibe. It's really awesome around the lobby, but you kind of lose it around the hotel. I have stayed in a studio uh, on cash, which I felt like was a very bad experience. Uh, however, I also have rented Disney Vacation Club points to stay in a two bedroom suite with my family, and that was an excellent value. This is a place where looking into those DVC point rentals might be worth it. If you need more space, a lot more space, you got adult kids, then you might want to check out a room at Old Key West, but do it with DVC point rental. Rooms at Old Key West start at $458 in cash, so you can see why you might want to go for the point rental. Get booking if you want a big room and are able to rent or use Disney Vacation Club points, or if you like a less crowded, slower paced vibe. This is also a good one if you're a golfer because there is a golf course right nearby. Go ahead and keep looking if you want direct and easy access to the parks because Old Key West is not going to give it to you. You might want to keep looking also if you don't plan to use DVC points to rent your room because the cash prices for this are a little steep. Our top 10, which is all but one admittedly, but our 10th place for the deluxe hotels, another DVC specific one, we've got Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. Similar to Old Key West, this one is a entirely DVC geared hotel with a focus on larger rooms and suites. This one's gonna have a similar ranking to Old Key West for a lot of similar reasons. It's got an internal bus loop, it's very spread out, it is more geared towards Disney Vacation Club and the value for money reflects that. Definitely better to rent points. However, Saratoga Springs does have nicer rooms. I had a very nice room when I stayed here. And though I wasn't super into the horse theme at first, it honestly kind of grew on me. This one is also great because it has a really nice proximity to Disney Springs. You can actually walk right over to Disney Springs from this hotel. So think about the access to dining and entertainment that you get just because of its location. Now you'll notice I said and spa. Saratoga Springs was one of the two hotels that offered a census spa. The other was Grand Floridian Resort. Uh, Grand Floridian Spa has returned, but Saratoga Springs has been closed since the 2020 park closures. I would say that similar to Old Key West, this one runs into the situation of being very worth it when it comes to Disney Vacation Club point rentals and not so worth it in cash. So get booking for the same reasons as Old Key West or if you plan to spend a whole lot of time in Disney Springs and keep looking for the same reasons as Old Key West, especially if you plan to book your hotel in cash and not on DVC point rentals. Ninth and eighth place is gonna be a little bit of a double feature. In ninth place, we have Disney's Yacht Club Resort, and in eighth place, we have the neighboring Disney's Beach Club Resort. These two hotels are often roped together because they are actually connected. They share a pool, they share many amenities, and they're right next to each other. The only reason Beach Club is ranked a little bit higher than Yacht Club is because it is just steps away from Epcot, and Yacht Club is like a few more steps. They're both very close to Epcot. At first, I was a little surprised when the numbers showed that these hotels were lower on the list, but it makes a little bit of sense when you consider what other hotels are above it. Now, personally, I consider Yacht and Beach Club to sit at the best location of any hotel in Disney World. Not only are you steps away from Epcot, my favorite park, you can also walk to Hollywood Studios, take a boat to either Epcot or Hollywood Studios, and you're very close to the Skyliner Station at Epcot as well, so you have easy access to the Skyliner Resorts. Of course, any of the hotels around Crescent Lake in the Epcot Resort area do offer a similar great location, but the best of the locations is awarded to Beach Club because it is so, so close to Epcot and with Yacht Club connected, it's very little to no difference. Now, keep in mind if you do want some of these more exciting locations and access to all of the amenities around Crescent Lake without paying as high of a price, you could check out the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, which are not included in our ranking today because they're not owned by Disney, they're not official Disney hotels, but the Swan, Dolphin, and Swan Reserve are all very close to Epcot and Hollywood Studios as well, within walking distance. You can tell we're getting into the really good hotels here uh, because this hotel is a favorite for many. Not only is that location awesome, but it also has a beach theme and a yacht theme over at Yacht Club, which might be a little bit more basic than some of the other themes, but it's still upscale and feels very vacation-y. I've never been to the Hamptons, but I imagine that this is what it would feel like. Yacht and Beach Club also share by far the best hotel pool in all of Disney World. This is Stormalong Bay and it's more than a pool, it's more like a mini water park. 
Uh, when it's open, they play music all day. They have a lazy river, sand bottom pools, an amazing pirate ship themed slide. Um, I say when it's open, it's open every day. I'm just here really early, so it's not open yet. Now, all of those amenities and the prime location certainly comes at a price. Rooms at both of these hotels start at around $543 per night. Whew. You might choose to get book in yacht or beach club if you have a resort day that you really want to spend at your resort. This is one of the best hotels to do so. And you can even see Fry Bucket and Emma experience that in their recent perfect day at this Disney World Hotel at Beach Club. You also might want to get book in if you are willing to splurge on the amenities and location or if you're going to prioritize Epcot on your trip since this makes it so convenient to get to that park. Next up in seventh place of our deluxe category, we have Disney World's newest hotel, Disney's Rivia. Era Resort. This is a Disney Vacation Club hotel. It has some of the largest rooms on property with their suites and also some of the smallest with their tower studios, which are sort of more affordable rooms. Uh, pretty low on the value category as DVC hotels go, but lots of people like to visit, especially for the dining. That dining is what moves Disney's Riviera Resort up of several notches, in my opinion. Uh, it's got Bar Riva, which is an amazing pool bar. Try the veggie skewer, even if you're not vegetarian. I promise it's delicious. Uh, my favorite coffee in all of Disney World is available in the lobby at Le Petit Cafe. Topolino's Terrace is an amazing rooftop Italian restaurant. Uh, and even Primo Piatto, their quick service is tasty. Now, Riviera Resort gets some criticism because it isn't the most attainable. It's definitely on the pricey side. And while the grounds are beautiful, especially the pools, people consider the theming to be a little lackluster. In particular, I'm not a fan of the lobby. Um, it's just hard to walk into some of these extremely grand, beautiful Disney World hotel lobbies and then see Riviera's and it's kind of like, uh. Now I say Riviera Resort is pricey, but it does actually offer the cheapest deluxe rooms by a few dollars. The tower studios, which only sleep two guests, are available starting at $453, with rooms getting more expensive from there. Now, technically cheapest, but it only sleeps two guests. They're very small rooms. That said, all the rooms here are gorgeous, so that's another reason that Riviera Resort is liked by some. You might want to get book in if you're looking for a getaway feel and want easy access to the Skyliner. Also, if you plan to take advantage of all of the dining options, then this might be the one you want to book. There's also a bocce ball court, so maybe if you're really into bocce ball. Of course, keep looking if you're not wanting to splurge, but also keep looking if a tower studio room is just too small for you. Those rooms are very cool, but they're very small. You can see one in my full room tour, and it's not a lot of space that you're paying $453 a night for. You also might want to keep looking if you want old school Disney theming. I'm talking Wilderness Lodge, Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, Grand Floridian, those huge, beautiful lobbies. That's not what you're gonna see here. Uh, most of the nice hangout space here at Riviera is gonna be outdoors. So maybe keep looking if you're looking for the summer too. Although a pool's nice in the summer. I can't come to Riviera and not have a coffee break. Seven Voyagers Lounge, which is the nice seating area, drinking my favorite coffee. Even if you don't stay at Riviera, get on the Skyliner and come drink this coffee. It's from Le Petit Cafe, it's the Almond Cold Brew. Don't drink it if you don't like almond. Sixth place for the deluxe resort category, we have Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is one of the opening day at Disney World Resorts. It opened in 1971 alongside Magic Kingdom. It's got a contemporary theme, but what contemporary was seen as in the 70s. Uh, the rooms have also recently gotten an Incredibles makeover. And uh, there's actually Bay Lake Tower as well, which is a Disney Vacation Club addition to the hotel. This hotel is a personal favorite of mine, thanks to its location right between Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake. And it is the closest hotel walking distance wise to Magic Kingdom. So you can walk there in about 10 minutes. Some folks don't love the theming of the contemporary because it's kind of austere, kind of boring. I like it, but mostly from a nostalgic perspective. Uh, and then with the new room rethemes, the Incredibles rooms, some people are pro the rethemes, others, myself included, think they're a little tacky and don't match the hotel. So I don't know, go watch my Incredibles room tour at the Contemporary and you can decide for yourself. That said, even with the more controversial theming, the Contemporary is considered an iconic and well-loved Disney hotel. It's got some of the best dining on property, including one of my personal favorite restaurants, California Grill, which is a rooftop dining restaurant. There's also nightly views of the fireworks from rooms in the hotel, viewing patios, and some of the restaurants. And completely unique to this hotel is that the monorail actually goes right through the main concourse on the fourth floor. Now, compared to the other monorail loop resort hotels, this hotel is cheaper, but it is still very expensive. Rooms start at $550 per night, and you're typically gonna find those cheaper rooms in the garden wing, which is sort of a side building to the main contemporary building. You should get booked in if contemporary is a bucket list hotel for you. 
if maybe you've got a kiddo or your family loves The Incredibles, it might be worth booking. And it's also the best located near Magic Kingdom. So if you're gonna be spending a lot of time at Magic Kingdom and you're willing to splurge a little bit, then the Contemporary might be the right choice for you. Keep looking if you are trying to save as this hotel is expensive. You might wanna keep looking if you're sensitive to noise. The way this main tower is built, it is very, very loud, especially because Chef Mickey's is here in the lobby and that is a very popular character meal, so it does get noisy in the morning and in the evening for dinner service. And with the room re-themes, you might want to keep looking if you're just not interested in a super themed room. The rooms here are now more themed than most rooms on property, if not all of them, but Art of Animation. And that's not as much my jam as it would have been when I had a kid, or it might be one day when I travel with kids. So. If you don't want a super themed room, keep looking. Next up in our ranking is Disney's Boardwalk Inn in fifth place. This hotel is themed around a boardwalk, a mid-century boardwalk, and there actually is the Disney Boardwalk, one of Disney's biggest entertainment areas located right out back of the hotel. Boardwalk Inn makes it to our top five today because it has the benefit of the same great location that Yacht and Beach has with that walking distance to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, as well as the boats. But on top of that is access to much more dining and recreation right at this resort. The hotel is situated on the Disney World Boardwalk, which is one of the largest out of park recreation and dining areas, pretty much the largest besides Disney Springs. At this resort, you'll find dining, shopping, and nightlife. And some of the nightlife stays open later than anything else in Disney World. You can actually check that out in Fry Bucket and I's late night Disney World video, where we stayed up all night to see what there is to do in the middle of the night. Spoiler alert, it's Jelly Rolls. It's a dueling piano bar and it's very fun. Now, I certainly didn't love my room when I stayed here at the boardwalk. I thought that it was a little outdated, but the hotel with the rooms and many of the common spaces is getting a refurbishment to get some nice new theming, some updates, and uh, so far, so good on the, the big changes that are coming. You can find one of those updates right here off of the lobby at Carousel Coffee, the new coffee bar. And this hotel has these. So the nanny chairs. I don't know how you feel about them, but I just like them. Rooms at this hotel are on the expensive side, starting at a whopping $597 per night. Uh, remember those prices are date based and based on room category. That's pretty expensive. So should you get booking or keep looking? You might want to get booking if you're a fan of nightlife as this hotel does have some of the best options. It's also a great one if you don't want to worry about getting around. It is super, super easy to get to Epcot or Hollywood Studios from this hotel. So you really only have to deal with the buses when you're going to Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom. Like many of the deluxe hotels, it's also a great option if you want to spend a lot of time at your resort. There's just a lot to do here at the boardwalk. Uh, you've got all your standards stuff like the pools and things like that but then you've also got the entire boardwalk at your disposal. You might want to plan to keep looking if you're not a big fan of the theme here because it's a really really excellent and well done theme but it can be a little dated to some or if you don't plan to spend a lot of time at the boardwalk. I would definitely book elsewhere if you're not going to take full advantage of this hotel just because part of what you're paying for is the experience. All right in fourth place yes fourth we'll talk about it in a second we have Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. This is, as you may be guessed, a Polynesian themed resort. It's got the island theme, a lot of tiki theme to it. It is very, very, very popular. Whether people stay here or not, they tend to visit. Amazing dining, beaches, fireworks used at night. There's even Dole Whip, just a popular hotel. Theming at this hotel is so all encompassing that you even get a lay when you check in. Uh, now the rooms are very nice. They were recently updated to add a slight Moana theme, which was controversial since a lot of people loved the rooms before, but the updated rooms are for sure nice. The dining at this resort is some of the most popular in all of Disney World with places like Kona Cafe having amazing sushi. Captain Cook's The Quick Service is well known for delicious eats. Um, and there's of course Ohana, the flagship restaurant here, which is an all you care to enjoy Polynesian meal. And there's even an interactive bar here, the only one of its kind in Disney World. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto is a very, very, very popular bar that tends to have multi-hour waits as soon as it opens. So get here right when this one opens, usually 3 p.m. if it's something you'd like to do. And on top of that, more is coming with the currently in progress Disney Vacation Club Tower that is being built as an addition to this hotel. So there will be more to come uh, in the future, you can keep an eye on allears.net for when we hear more about that. I know you guys are screaming at me in the comments. I know. I love Polynesian too. Uh, this ranking is not just based on my opinion and it is partially based on my experience, but it's also based on the number of pools, the variety of dining, other people's experiences, how they've rated the dining, how they've rated their whole stays here. 
it's based on your experience as well as mine and as well as my team's. Part of the reason this hotel isn't rated any higher than fourth place is because of its price. This hotel costs a whopping $662 per night starting. That's the base for a standard room here at Polynesia. Now this one was just barely edged out by our third place hotel for a similar reason. Lots and lots of great amenities, a pretty eye-popping price, but we'll get there when we get there. So should you get booking or keep looking when it comes to Polynesian? You should get booking if this is a bucket list experience for you. I know for many it is. It certainly was for me before I had stayed here. If you want that bucket list experience, I think you should get booking. Save up for it. Maybe do a couple nights here and a couple nights at a cheaper hotel. Um, but Polynesian is certainly a wonderful experience. It's also worth booking if you want a historic and very Disney experience. Polynesian is one of the opening day Disney World Resort hotels. So it's one of the most historic hotels. It's 50 years old, just like Magic Kingdom. You also should consider booking it if you're a foodie. The food here at Polynesian is some of the best of the hotels, uh, and I can't recommend it enough. Even if you don't book, you might want to swing by for one of the restaurants or just a Dole Whip. Now you might notice a pattern here, but you should keep looking if you don't want to splurge or if you don't have time to spend time at your hotel. When you're spending this much money, you want to enjoy the amenities around this hotel. And it certainly is a splurge with those rooms being upwards of $600 a night. So you're probably noticing a pattern here. It's pretty standard of all the deluxes. Don't book if you don't have time to stay at the hotel and don't want to spend. There's that tower standing over there. Uh, it just did hit 10 stories, I believe. Um, and it looks like they're done going up and they're now doing going out at the bottom. So it'll be interesting to see what comes there. If you disagree with this ranking at any point, make sure to go review your favorite or least favorite hotel over on allears.net. Your review could help future Disney fans decide on their hotel. But hopefully this video helps you to decide what hotel might be right for you or just help you see a little bit more of the really cool hotels around Disney World. In third place is Disney World's flagship hotel, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. The beautiful Victorian theme, old Florida style hotel that is the most expensive in Disney World. This hotel is known for its beautiful theming and luxury offerings while still having that Disney approachability, unlike what you might find at the Four Seasons or the Ritz Carlton. There's stunning dining here at Grand Floridian, including Enchanted Rose, a Beauty and the Beast themed bar, as well as one of the highest rated restaurants, not just in Disney World, but in all of Florida, the very, very fine dining establishment, Victoria and Alberts. If you are curious about Victoria and Alberts, you can check out Breedlove and I's full review of the experience there. It is pretty wild. Um, that's up on the channel now. This resort even has more shopping than most hotels, including a basin soap store right on the second floor of the lobby. There's a currently closed, but hopefully will return one day, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. This resort also has a walking path directly to Magic Kingdom. It's a little bit longer than Disney's contemporary resorts, but still a very pleasant walk. In the lobby, you can experience a live music pretty regularly. There is a piano where a pianist does play pretty often. And around the holidays, this resort has some of the most magical plus ups that you can imagine. When it comes to the rooms, you'll be sleeping in as close to luxury as you can find in Disney World. Now, when I stayed, my room was a little bit outdated, but many of the rooms have been seeing an update. Um, and I've been inside the new DVC villas that have a slight Mary Poppins theme, and they're absolutely gorgeous. The only reason why Disney's Grand Floridian Resort isn't ranked higher is because it is so, so, so so expensive. Yes, it has some of the best dining, some of the best amenities, some of the most beautiful grounds and theming, but you really do pay through the nose to get it. Rooms at this resort start, start at $794 per night. There are just deluxe hotels that are a better value than this one, um, and that's going to push them a little higher in our ranking. That said, this experience is spectacular. So, you know, if it's something you can splurge on, maybe. You can see renovations are still in uh, progress. This is actually the building that I stayed in during my resort tour that you can see on the channel now. So my kind of outdated, kind of dinged up room uh, is getting some updates. Get booking if you are ready to splurge. This is a bucket list hotel for you and you want that prime Disney experience. Grand Floridian is the creme de la creme of Disney World hotels. And if you want that, get booking. On the other hand, keep looking for many of the same reasons as the other deluxe hotels. If you don't love the theme, keep looking. If you're okay with a little different, keep looking. You can spend less at any other hotel. If you can't splurge, keep looking. 
And weirdly enough, if you want true luxury, you might want to keep looking. Something about the Disney feel, the approachability of the hotel does actually take away from the luxury factor of Grand Floridian. So if you want true luxury, you're better off looking at like the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons. I'm taking a mac and cheese break. Listen, hotel breaking's hard work. Also, Gasparilla Island Grill mac and cheese, best in Disney World. Second place for our deluxe resorts is the beautiful Animal Kingdom Lodge. This resort is in the Animal Kingdom Resort area, as you probably guessed, and has a heavy African influence to the theme. Much of the decorations around the hotel are authentic African art. There are African cultural representatives around the hotel as cast members who can teach you a lot about African culture. And there's a real savanna out behind the hotel. Both sides, Kadani and Jamba House, have their own savannas, and you can see animals right outside of your window in many cases. It might surprise you the Animal Kingdom Lodge beats out contemporary and Grand Floridian and Polynesian, but it does so for a very good reason. Not only does this hotel offer the same level of amenities, dining, and immersive theming as those hotels, it does so at a more reasonable price and has the more unique amenity of having the savannas. With all of the more unique amenities at this hotel, the more affordable price really does help this one out just when it comes to value for money. You're getting a lot of the same level of care and amenities as you do at those monorail loop hotels near Magic Kingdom, but you get the added bonus of not paying nearly as much per night. Pelicans on the move. The biggest downside to this hotel is that it is the only deluxe that only offers bus transportation and it's located relatively far from all of the parks except Animal Kingdom. So if transportation is a big priority for you, this one might not rank as highly. But you might find that the hotel more than makes up for it with its elaborate theming, beautiful cultural details, amazing African dining, African artwork, and those savannah overlooks. I personally love this hotel. I've just found that the walk to the room can be a long one. but. If my walk to the room is long, but I can see a giraffe out my window, I'm okay with it. Rooms start at $469 per night, so it is on the cheaper side of those deluxe resort hotels. And you should get booked in if you really love animals, if you want a more luxury, unique experience at a more reasonable price point, or if you're interested in trying new foods. Keep looking if you want to be closer to the theme parks, or you don't care as much for the animals or for Disney's Animal Kingdom. There's probably better options for you. Now I'm having a zebra domes break. These are um, these like chocolatey, alcohol -y little treats. Can't go to Animal Kingdom Lodge and not get zebra domes. Okay, sorry, back to your ranking. It's time for our number one winner in the deluxe category. If you used process of elimination, you might have figured it out. It's Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort. Honestly, I'm a little shocked by this one, but when you think about it, it makes sense. Disney's Wilderness Lodge is what it sounds like. It is a Wilderness Lodge themed resort. It's supposed to be kind of like a Wilderness Lodge that you might find in the Pacific Northwest. It has the log cabin vibe. There's cowboy influences. You can see a lot of really interesting like representations of nature around the hotel. It feels like an outdoor escape. The reason Wilderness Lodge is our winner is because it does a lot right and it does a lot right at a more reasonable price point. Wilderness Lodge offers the same level of deluxe amenities as the other hotels at the top of this ranking, but it has the more reasonable pricing, kind of like Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. On top of that, unlike Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, it is located in the Magic Kingdom Resort area. So you're very centrally located in Disney World and have access to a boat that will take you right to Magic Kingdom. Fans of this resort really love the variety of restaurants like the relaxing Geyser Point Lounge on the water, there's a Snow White character meal at Artist Point, and there's even the antics filled Whispering Canyon. Many of the dining options at this resort are destinations in their own right, and they have very, very high rankings over on allairs.net. The rooms have also been recently updated, so they have the nice Disney updated vibe while still holding on to that wilderness theme. Keep an eye on the wallpaper, you might spot some mischievous chipmunks. The theming here is some of the best of the best. It has that grandiose multi-story lobby, including a multi-story stone fireplace. You can even hear crickets outside as you pull up if it's quiet enough. And the theming is so involved that there's even a working geyser that you can watch. I believe it erupts every half hour, but it's been under construction for a while. The pool here is also especially impressive because it actually springs from a spring in the lobby flows through a creek all the way to the pool. On top of that, there's a wide variety of room types at this hotel. There are Disney Vacation Club villas, as well as Disney Vacation Club cabins on the water, which I would love to stay in so much. 
Rooms at this hotel are going to be pricey like the other deluxe resorts, but not nearly as pricey as many of them. It's gonna be $458 per night, which is going to be the cheapest option for a standard deluxe hotel room. Remember those tower suites at Riviera are a little bit cheaper, but they do only sleep two people. You might wanna get booking if you want deluxe accommodations at a more reasonable price than some of the others. It's also a great one if you plan to spend a lot of time in Magic Kingdom and if you have time for some resort relaxation. You're gonna wanna take in all that Wilderness Lodge has to offer. Now, the reasons to skip Wilderness Lodge are if you don't wanna spend on a deluxe at all or if you just really hate the theme. Although I can't really imagine anyone hating the theme because it's a beautiful hotel. Also, if you do wanna splurge, you might just wanna go big and go on one of the monorail resorts, but this one certainly has more value for money. And with that, we have done our full ranking of all the Disney World Resort hotels. If you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And now go watch my full tour of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. I'll see you there.